In recent weeks, the topic of energy efficiency and sustainability has without doubt been one of the world's biggest talking points. And our telecom industry has a huge role to play in supporting national and regional ambitions on climate change. Well, a new radar report from the GSMA intelligence team has analysed how telcos can play their part in these objectives and also how connectivity can actually help other industries decarbonise. With me today to discuss some of the key findings from the report are Amanda Gosling, who leads the TMT sector for Capgemini Invent in the UK, and Tim Hatt, Head of Research and Consulting at GSMA Intelligence and also author of the report. Welcome to you both. It is great to see you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Tim, let's start with you. Um, this report is obviously very topical. We've just had the COP26 summit in Glasgow, of course. Um, talk us through some of the report's biggest findings. What are the major takeaways? Yeah, well, thanks very much, Justin. As you say, it is very topical given COP having just taken place in Glasgow. Um, I think there's three things I would highlight. The first is that telecom sector activity hasn't just begun. It's actually gaining quite a lot of momentum. Um, we know that sustainability and energy efficiency is a major priority for telecom operators. Over 90% rated as a very important priority in their transformation plans. And we're seeing a whole host of solutions from AI to lithium batteries to software-defined networking, all designed to improve the efficiency of how networks run. Secondly, though, is the telco industry impact on other sectors decarbonizing. We know that the world needs to shed 50% carbon reductions in each of the next three decades, and we think mobile and digital technology can make a very significant contribution to that impact um, through its enablement effect. And then finally, um, the supply chain partnerships needed to coordinate to reduce what are called scope three emissions, which are really the largest, but arguably the hardest to capture, um, are also gaining traction. And we're seeing a lot of new models between, for example, handset suppliers and operators and others to coordinate around how you unleash the circular economy to help this effort as well. Thanks, Tim. Um, let's bring Amanda in. Amanda, Tim spoke of the need there for telcos to decarbonize their own house, if you like. Um, how would you sum up the role that telcos should play in the path to net zero? Well, I mean, I personally think that telcos are at this beautiful nexus point that also happens to be an incredible tension point of being the enablers of the next generation of economic activity, yes, but also the potential to be sort of sustainability in its meta term a really people, planet and prosperity. But in order to do that, they have to clean up their own houses and then also be the enablers of the sustainable transformation that is going to be the thing that comes. And I think that they they have such a, a central role to do that, that it really is now almost um, the telcos becoming two different types of telcos. They're their own their own organisation and operations, and then they are an ecosystem player in the next generation of industry. And where does Capgemini sit in this, Amanda? I mean, as a company, what steps is Capgemini really taking to help drive sustainable change? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, it's about both walking the walk internally and then walking the walk with our clients. And I think from an internal perspective, we believe that we have to create experts amongst all of us. So we have a huge enablement plan going on, everything from training courses, certifications, we're running crowd for, uh, crowdsourcing platforms to, to generate sustainable ideas that we will invest in to create assets to, to take to clients. Um, and then we're also very committed to this cross-sector collaboration to break through into different in innovations and, and business models. Um, one of the things I personally do is I chair this thing called the ACORN series, which is um, we get to see sea level people from different industries around a table with a provocateur and we have a lovely conversation. And the last one, the idea came out was we need to get the CFOs around the table with the business to see how we can bake in the sustainability measures into the business cases of the future, which dovetails quite nicely with one of the points that Tim makes in his report around being able to, whilst the payback of some of these sustainability investments might be long term, 
they need to be brought into the business cases and, and measured effectively so that the decisions are made with the planet and the and the people at the centre. Tell us a little bit more about how you work with clients as well, Amanda, on the issue of sustainability. Yeah, so I think some of this is really about getting it out of um, sort of the CSR and into the operations, right? So we have a, a sort of a, a nice, simple framework, commit, act, monitor. You know, what you can't see, you don't do. So having the transparency of understanding what's going on, and as, as Tim said, the scope three is the hardest place to have transparency. So being able to actually make the investments to see all the way through your supply chains, to be able to see your full operations sort of up and down as well, and being able to have the confidence to act. And I think this is where it's an interesting um, intersection of humans, individual human beings that work in corporations, being able to have the confidence to act in new ways that then change the organizations. And I think that's how we're, we're really helping our clients get that confidence to just to just move and to start thinking about, you know, we had digital transformations and rock on, they were brilliant, but this is now the time for sustainable transformations um, and being able to have the right capabilities as well as transparency and traceability of your business is really where we're partnering with our clients to do it. We've got examples all over the place where, you know, helping farmers in Africa, getting getting um, manufacturers into the scope three tra- uh, transparency and things. Um, and it is really an exciting time, actually, to be partnering with our clients in this way. And in closing, let's bring Tim back in. Uh, Amanda very much focused on the need to start walking the walk on sustainable business practice and, and delivering on these good intentions, Tim. Uh, is that fair enough? Does that kind of coincide with, with your takeaways? Yeah, it really does. And here's an interesting data point. Um, I think it's an interesting interplay when you look at the commitments from the private sector versus national governments. Before COP, of the nearly 200 signatories of the Paris Agreement, um, under 20% of those had actually legislated a net zero pathway. And that means they've written it into law. Now, that's not insignificant, but it's not nearly enough in terms of where we need to get to. Um, That will grow, of course, post-COP, but it still needs to grow considerably. Whereas a lot of the leaders we see in the telco sector and adjacents have actually, from the top down, made this a central priority for their corporate strategy. As Amanda said, it's no longer CSR. It's very much front and center in terms of the entire core of how you operate. So I think we're going to see more of that going forward. And the other point I would make is alignment on reporting standards to common frameworks so that everybody is singing off the same hymn sheet and we're able to analyze the data over time. But it's a really fascinating area. Tim, Amanda, thank you very much for taking the time to share your insight on this critical topic. Um, For those of you looking to read more on the topic, uh, we are making the radar report available on gsmaintelligence.com. So do check it out there. Uh, Once again, Tim, Amanda, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. 